over the years, you really have had a lot of very obtrusive cam <laughs> cameramen who have been right up in your face. Yeah. I mean, you have the television cameras there, and then there's people with a handheld camera who's just coming in, really, close. you know, really looking over your shoulder. Yeah. And I mean, it's just real. And sometimes, you know, you were wearing mini skirts. Back, back in the eighties, and, and they were down on the floor, and I mean, it was just a mess. What was that like for you as a performer? Does that uh, bother you when no, when that's going on at all? No, it has never been a problem for me. Also, not taking photographs or things like that. I, it doesn't disturb me. Um, just once, I remember that a cameraman was so close to me that uh, he hit one note on my keyboard. <laughs> But he was shocked by himself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it does. I don't um, care. That no. doesn't face you. No, well. no. <laughs> Fortunately, no. <laughs> now, that's a real interesting question. There's a thing they call the uh, Trainingsweltmeister. We say in German, right? Yeah. Like ski racers, they have. To, they call it someone who's mm -hmm. a world champion in training. In training, yeah. Mm -hmm. But when the actual race comes, their nerves get the best of them. They just have too much yeah. adrenaline or something flowing mm -hmm. through them, and it, and it screws them up, and they're not able to really perform well. I wondered, have you come across musicians like that who, in their relaxed moments, are absolutely fantastic, but on stage they have difficulties? Yes, um, but not often. Um, but every, very rare, I, I uh, realize that. But mostly it's work because we have to, you know. Otherwise, you don't have a you chance. Won't, you if wouldn't you, have the career, right? Maybe. Yeah, if you don't have a chance if, if in the important moment you can't play anymore. You know, if you are on a certain level, uh, or yeah, where you, you, you deliver a certain uh, quality of music, then you have, uh, let's say, uh, a minimum level and you never can go below that. You know, sometimes it's much over it, sometimes a little over it, but it never goes under that. Uh -huh. And this range above that is so small that the people mostly don't even realize it. So, you know what and I mean? Yes, or then you have these Sternstunden, so the special moments where mm -hmm. everything is great and, and it's such, just wonderful. But I always over, also realized, and also co colleagues of mine say the same thing, that sometimes you feel like you didn't play good. And when you listen to a recording, then you're mostly surprised that you played much better than you thought. Than you thought. So your individual feeling is sometimes... Um, be, not betraying, do you say betraying you in a way, or not giving you the right, so. the right uh, impression? Right. Let's say like that. And I mean, this is a good thing. Or even if you think, oh, I made a mistake, and I, sometimes I said, oh, I, I made a mistake there, and and even colleagues said, really, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I forget, what, was it Miles Davis who said the, the mistake isn't important, it's the note it's that comes chance. after us, yeah. that comes after the mistake. I, I'm not sure if he said yeah, that, yeah. but I think it but might the, be. You know, the challenge is, if you really make a mistake, but let's say a mistake is just a note you didn't intend to play maybe, but then make it work, you know, right, by right. what, yeah, you, what right. you play after it, right? And that's the art, and, and that um, works quite good. And also if... Sometimes it happens in the band, you know, that someone is not checking the cue or, you know, think, little things like that. And But somehow you always make it work. And I remember I had a concert um, with Philharmonic Orchestra. You might know that I had sure, this yeah. CD change of pace where I played with Philharmonic Orchestra. My music. Orchestra. Exactly. And I remember we had a concert and the orchestra missed the cue of the... A conductor so that was a mess you know <laughs> and but but and I played with in trio with drums uh, Hammond organ and saxophone right. and I played bass as well with my foot and we reacted so good that we repeated this thing so that the orchestra could, could start again in. to come in at the right spot and nobody realized but we were <gasps> <laughs> That's Exciting. the good thing about jazz, people, they're, they're ready for things like yeah. that when you throw them a curveball. But you know, at that moment you are dying because you think, oh my God, oh my God, what's happening? And are they getting it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what yes. if not, you know, a big orchestra, if you have up to 80 musicians 
and they are not together anymore, this is the worst that can happen. Oh my God. If you are in a small bed, and you're or recording we are, it, and it, yeah, and this is yeah. your only night to or record maybe it. That, yeah. or, or when you are, uh, that's a, the point about playing solo. I mean, if in solo something happens, you can do anything. Nobody will ever realize, you know. And the more musicians you have, the more you have to make things or fix things or, or, or be um, have pay attention all the time that you really get the right uh, places where to play special things or that you get every cue. So that's important. The more musicians, more important, the more musicians you have on stage. So what's that like for you when you? like on the evening when you know you're going to be recorded, like we talked about before, I know there are musicians who don't do live recordings. That much I know. You I know, have they're... made a lot of live recordings. <laughs> yeah, and you've made and, a lot. But yeah. What, how do you feel like you're backstage, and yeah. there's an 80-piece orchestra, <laughs> you, have this, you have this one night, and you have right. you know, this huge concert hall yeah. full of people. Yeah. I mean... Are you at ease? Or do you have a lot of butterflies in your stomach? You never can tell, you know. It's very strange. Um, and I, I didn't never found out why it happens sometimes. And sometimes you are so relaxed. I, I just don't know. Uh, sometimes um, you're, you're getting nervous, of course, because you think, oh, God, hopefully everything is getting going good. And mm -hmm. But sometimes you are totally relaxed. I, I just don't know. And I wished I could be totally relaxed all the time, but uh, I think nobody can manage that. There I, are I moments hear, where you I hear performers nervous. say all the time, if you don't have that anticipation and, and yeah, that feeling, then it, it just won't happen right. The magic won't be there. That's what I don't know. I'm not sure because it can also happen what you say, that someone is so nervous that he can't play anymore, right? right. So I think it, it has... Uh, uh, to have a, a total concentration and a kind of excitement, but it should not be that much that um, it's preventing you from playing relaxed, you mm -hmm. know. That sweet so, spot. Yeah, I think the best thing is you are totally relaxed and into the music. That's what I personally feel. Do you have like any maybe rituals that you in, do? Do you have like some breathing exercises no, or meditation? Nothing. Or? That would make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that. The funny thing is... Three if cups you, of coffee. And no, if you wake me up in the middle of the night and say, okay, now play in front of 30,000 people, then I'd be most relaxed. <laughs> So um, the best thing is just nothing, just going to dinner and uh, have a nice chat and, and then on stage and play. If you have to wait and, and concentrate on that, I think that makes me more nervous. than. I remember your, your parents showed me, they, they shared a little bit of their video archives <laughs> with me once and they showed me something, I think it was your very first uh, time on television. And, oh, yeah, and a camera, a camera, no, a camera crew oh. came to your home. Oh, yeah, that and was I think first, your boyfriend yeah. played an instrument too, and the two of you were there, and you were just so natural. They they talked to you, and it was like no, that was not my boyfriend. It was a drummer of mine. Oh, okay, just a friend. Yeah, yeah, just a, a friend with whom I school friend. Uh, no, um, actually, just someone who played drums, and and we got together through the music. Oh, okay. So, uh, and we, we played for quite young. a while. Yes. In this thing, I think maybe 16 or so. No, 15, 15, maybe, 15, I think. At the most, 15. Or was it even earlier? Maybe earlier. It was, I was in school and it was the first uh, TV thing, and I remember, yeah. But you know, um, when you are very young, I, I, I don't know, it's hard to remember back how you mm -hmm. were right. about 30 years ago or so. I wonder if that's but, part of the reason that, that it's so easy for you. Is, it started so early. Yeah, maybe. Like your father told this story to me. It's so great. I, I told him he should write a book before, you know, he loses this because there's so many interesting things. But he was telling me that there was a jazz club and you'd wanted to play there or something. And uh, you'd gone with friends on vacation to Italy or something. Oh, and they called yeah. and they said, if she wants to, we've got an opening and she could come and play. And they, yeah, and they were panicked and got a hold of you and you came back. And, yeah, and but, immediately had to play with a bass player and a drummer from the Hugo Strasser band and um, the uh, two English people. And um, this was 
totally spontaneous. We didn't have time to make a, a big rehearsal. I just came back from Italy. I shortened my holidays because of that concert. And then I met the two guys and we talked about what we play. And then we went on. And it, my father has recorded that night. And it's one of the best concerts. I Does he have any, uh, any audio? Could we share at the end of the interview? Could yeah. maybe he give me some that we could share a little bit of that? Uh, yes. Um, I think I'll that, ask him. If, if he'll yeah, do it. because I don't know. He has it off tone band, you know. Maybe he can transfer so, it. We'll I don't see. know if he can do that. Um, if he has okay. the technical possibility. Yeah, you have to ask. Fingers him. crossed. <laughs> because I have it somewhere too, but I, it's in a lot. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, yeah, maybe it's you can possible. ask him. It's really. It was really great. It was so good and. Um, it was just so fun, so much fun. And, uh, you know, in, I was so in, passionate. I was so much into music that in was general. The it was about the music, time. really, yeah, right? It was totally about the music. And I was happy when I could play that. And I, I had a lot of power. And I never thought about failing or, I don't know. At that time, I remember that I had an inner strength, which was really... Um, astonishing and I always thought nothing can happen to me and if it's not good with music I do something else I was mm -hmm. so relaxed you know I was convinced that um, I have a lot of talents and I will make my life and I had never doubts or so and I think this gave me the strength and uh, self-confidence self to do that I think so I'm breaking in here to give you guys some great news I've known about the concert that Barbara mentioned a few moments ago for quite a while, but I've never actually heard it. So I wasn't sure, but I contacted Barbara's father and asked him if he would be willing to allow me to use some. And, great news, he said yes. And he had it on MP3, and I was able to use it. It's of teenage Barbara Dinnerline. She's playing Charlie Parker's tune, Billy's Bounce. And we've got Alan Watterson on drums and Eric Stevens on bass. This was recorded by Hans Dinnerlein at the Schwabinger Spritze Jazz Club in Munich. Hope you guys enjoy it.